Hello, everyone. Um, I will use my gavel to call to order the 89th meeting of the National Advisory Council for Human Genome Research. Uh, welcome to everyone joining us uh, remotely because this entire um, uh, council meeting is being conducted in a virtual format. A particular welcome to our council members um, and uh, hello to all the NHGRI staff because we are completely dispersed in different locations at the moment due to the COVID-19 pandemic. I did wanna say just a couple comments about the circumstance we find ourselves in. Um, first, and foremost, first and foremost, I hope um, all of you watching and listening um, are safe and healthy. I certainly hope you remain that way. We are living in very challenging times and I hope people are doing their best uh, to persevere through uh, the many challenges the circumstance presents to us. Um, here at NHGRI, uh, one of the challenges we obviously face is to continue to conduct the business we have uh, in being an agency with responsibility to fund genomics research uh, that must continue uh, despite uh, the current situation. And among our many responsibilities include uh, decisions about funding uh, grants, uh, both uh, current opportunities, uh, future opportunities, and also uh, getting general input from our advisory council. Um, and I think as many of you know, uh, we have three council meetings a year. Uh, they must go on because we have got to do the business of, of making sure we give the grants out in a timely fashion uh, with the money we're given each fiscal year. And so uh, we're very appreciative of our council members and of our staff to figure out a way to continue to do what we need to do in conducting a council meeting. When we normally gather, we gather in person and do this. And obviously uh, the present circumstances don't allow that. Um, and so uh, let me just start the council meeting by just saying an immense thank you to the NHGRI staff, and that ranges everything from our IT staff to our communication staff, to our program staff, our administrative, I mean, immense number of people have been involved in trying to figure out how to conduct a council meeting uh, remotely in virtual format and actually having to organize all this virtually because we obviously have not been together for many, many weeks. Um, and so fingers crossed this will all go well, but I, I will, if, I'm sure it will go well. Um, but most important, it's going well because of the incredible dedication and hard work by many people at the Institute to make this happen. And again, a shout out to our council members for their flexibility of allowing us to do this in this kind of format, which all of us unfortunately have gotten used to. And so we're actually getting quite facile at conducting meetings virtually. Um, this is the 89th meeting of this council. Uh, again, meeting three times a year, you could do the arithmetic. I can't help um, but uh, point out uh, a little bit of a historic irony. I, I was thinking back on when was the last time we couldn't conduct a regularly scheduled council meeting in person. Um, and it actually turns out I, it was an easy thing for me to remember uh, because it was my very first council meeting as the new director. I became the director on December 1st of 2009 and I knew one of the big first things I had to do was to convene my first council meeting in February. So those, so I don't know, what was it, eight or 10 weeks were a blur, just getting ready for this first big council meeting. Um, and that would have been, the, it was the 58th meeting of the National Advisory Council for Human Genome Research. And that weekend, something that effectually got labeled Snowmageddon hit the Washington DC area and immediately made it clear uh, that an in-person meeting was not gonna happen. And so my very first meeting as NHGRI director of this council, with this council uh, was, was also held virtually and that old fashioned technology called conference calls. And now it's just so different, but we did it all through a conference call. The difference though was that a, a small number of us from the senior staff were able to convene in a conference room, be together at least, as opposed to the way we're all doing it now. Uh, uh, many cases completely isolated in, in a conference room or in a home study or somewhere uh, all on our own. So uh, it's a little different than what it was in Snowmageddon, which was number 58. I also thought this morning, how many, have there been any other major disruptions to an NHGRI council meeting? And there, there is the number one historic uh, uh, re, re, uh, story that comes in. Uh, it's turned out that council meeting number 33 was held on a Monday. That Monday was September 11th of 2001, um, which all of us, of course, know was 9-11. And in fact, that was an example where a council meeting actually got truncated, obviously, it had to end early because of the events of that day. Uh, but there, there are some memorable stories of, of what, ha as 
many memorable stories associated with 9-11, but that included the fact that all the council members were here in Bethesda. Um, and that meeting had to be immediately suspended. And then there were all sorts of issues uh, associated with getting our council members back home again. That won't be a circumstance this time because they already are home right now. But in any case, I just wanted to reflect on a little bit of history. Um, obviously, uh, we are glad that uh, these interruptions to our normal routines don't happen very often, 2001, 2010, and now in 2020. Um, but they do happen on occasion and we just figure out how we're gonna proceed under the circumstances. So with that as a little bit of a historic backdrop, I will turn this over to our um, incredibly competent Executive Secretary, uh, Rudy Pizzotti, let him uh, proceed with, with the agenda. Thank you, Eric. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the, council, the uh, May Council meeting for NHTRI. Uh, I'll echo some of Eric's uh, comments that uh, this is our first time down this path. And so I'll ask for people's patience and understanding there may be some uh, somewhat awkward uh, pauses or moments of silence and equal so number of people number of times that people may try to speak over one another but we'll get through it all and uh, we're happy to have this technology that allows us to complete our work. I want to remind the council that as Eric said this is being live streamed but there's also there will also be a, a recording of the open session of this council meeting and it will be archived uh, along with all the other open sessions dating back to 2011, I believe, and, and available at the NHGRI website. Uh, we do have one new employee uh, to introduce to the council members. Uh, are we able to project her slide? There she is, uh, Laura Eisenman. Uh, Laura has spent over 38 years as a federal employee. And for 19 of those years, she worked at the National Institutes for Allergy and Infectious Disease, where she served as a lead grants management specialist. Laura has also worked as a specialist at the National Center for Advancing Translational Sciences. And for the past two years, and for as long as we can continue to talk her into doing it in the future, uh, Laura joins us as a part-time employee at the, as a grants management specialist at the busiest time of the year uh, in an effort to get all the awards out uh, before the end of the fiscal year. So Laura, welcome back, welcome aboard. We're glad to have you again. Thank you, you can uh, take the slide down, please. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge our Council Society liaison members who are viewing the council meeting on the web. Ellen Giarelli from the International Society of Nurses and Genetics, Mona Miller from the American Society of Human Genetics, Sharon Terry and Catherine Lambertston from the Genetic Alliance, and Rhonda Schonberg from the National Society of Genetic Counselors. Welcome and thank you all. Uh, council members, I seek your approval of the minutes from the February council meeting. Does anyone have any edits, correct, corrections, or changes that they would like to propose to those meetings, to the minutes? Okay, hearing none, I'll ask for a vote. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the February minutes? I, I motion. Thank you, any second, please? Second. And we're just gonna do this by voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Uh, I want to draw your attention to the uh, future meeting dates. They're listed on the open session agenda, the meeting dates for the next six council meetings. Please have a look at them, share them with your schedule keepers. And if you notice any conflicts uh, with any of those meetings, please let me know and uh, notify Comfort Brown as well. And with that, I'm ready to turn the meeting back over to Eric for his director's report. 